Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble 8, Costs of Production, Micro. Number 1, How Does the Law of Diminishing Marginal Returns Work? As a firm increases its employment of an economic input such as labor, its total product will increase. Initially, total product will rise at an increasing rate. Then, the total product will continue to rise, but at a decreasing rate. This is due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. Here are the three stages of production for a firm. 1. Increasing marginal returns. When marginal product, or the change in total product, divided by the change in number of inputs, increases, total product is rising at an increasing rate. 2. Diminishing marginal returns. When marginal product falls, total product rises at a decreasing rate. This means that when a firm employs additional units of a resource, the additional output added to the total product by the next resource will decline. This occurs when variable resources are added to fixed capital goods. 3. Negative marginal returns. When total product is at its highest level, marginal product is zero. When total product falls, marginal product becomes negative, and the firm experiences negative marginal returns. Number two, what is the relationship between the average product curve and marginal product curve? The marginal product and average product curves initially increase, then decrease due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. Marginal product is the change in total product divided by the change in quantity of resources. Average product is the total product divided by the quantity of economic resources. The average product reaches its peak when it intersects the marginal product curve. Number three, why are economic profits often less than accounting profits? An economic profit occurs when a firm's total revenue, or the price times quantity, exceeds its total economic costs. From an economic standpoint, costs are explicit, which are paid out to a resource supplier, and implicit, which is an opportunity cost that is not paid out to a resource supplier. An accounting profit does not take into account implicit costs. Therefore, accounting profits will exceed economic profits when an opportunity cost is present. For example, if a firm is breaking even and earning zero economic profit or a normal profit, accounting profits can be positive. Number four, what types of costs does a typical firm face? There are three types of costs that all firms face. One, fixed costs. Fixed costs must be paid to resource suppliers regardless of output. An example is rent paid for factory space. When a firm produces zero units of output, it still pays its fixed cost. Two, variable costs. Variable costs change with output. An example is an hourly employee. Three, Total costs. Total costs equal the fixed costs plus variable costs. Number five, how do you calculate and graph the per unit costs of a firm? Per unit costs are used to derive the average cost curves of a firm. To get average costs, simply divide the total costs by the quantities produced. Average fixed cost is equal to the fixed costs divided by quantity, or average total cost minus average variable cost. Average variable cost is equal to the total variable cost divided by quantity, or average total cost minus average fixed cost. Average total cost is equal to the total cost divided by quantity, or the average fixed cost 
plus the average variable cost. The most important cost is marginal cost because marginal costs help determine a firm's optimal level of output. The marginal cost is equal to the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. The marginal cost curve is shaped like a check mark. Marginal costs initially fall, then rise as output increases. This is because of diminishing marginal returns. The average total cost curve and average variable cost curve are U-shaped. Both curves will reach their lowest points when intersecting the marginal cost curve. The difference between the ATC and AVC represents the average fixed cost. This is why the space between the ATC and AVC curves narrow as output increases. Number six, what is the relationship between total revenue and marginal revenue? There are three types of revenue to consider for a firm. Total revenue, average revenue, and marginal revenue. The revenue formulas are total revenue equals price times quantity. Average revenue is equal to total revenue divided by quantity. Marginal revenue is equal to the change in total revenue divided by the change in output. By calculating a firm's average revenue, we can derive its demand curve. The marginal revenue is the additional revenue a firm gains from producing one more unit of output. In Noble 7, we noted the relationship between total revenue and the price elasticity of demand. Now we can link the elasticity of demand to marginal revenue. When marginal revenue is positive, an increase in price will show a decrease in total revenue. That's because demand is elastic. When marginal revenue is negative, an increase in price will show an increase in total revenue. That's because demand is inelastic. When marginal revenue is zero, total revenue is at its peak. Remember, Total revenue and economic profit are not the same. A firm prefers to maximize economic profits, not total revenue. Number seven, how do you determine the level of output where a firm will maximize economic profit? The profit maximization rule is that a firm should produce at a level of output where its marginal revenue equals its marginal cost, or MR is equal to MC. At this point, a firm will experience its greatest economic profit or minimize its economic losses. When price is greater than the average total cost at the MR equals MC output point, a firm is earning a profit. When price is less than average total cost, a firm takes a loss. You can also calculate a firm's total revenues and total costs at every level of output and then find the differences to see where profits are maximized. Number eight, how will a per unit tax and lump sum tax affect a firm's costs and output? A per unit tax discourages production by raising marginal costs or it shifts the MC curve upward. This will decrease the firm's level of output and reduce economic profits. The average total cost and average variable cost curves also ship up, but it's the marginal cost curve that changes the profit maximizing level of output because the MR equals MC point has moved to the left. A lump sum tax does not change a firm's level of output because a lump sum tax does not change marginal cost. It increases the firm's fixed costs and shifts average total cost upward. This will decrease a firm's economic profit, but not change output. A per unit subsidy encourages more production by lowering marginal costs. That is, it shifts the MC curve downward. This will increase the firm's level of output and increase economic profit. The average total cost and average variable cost curves also shift down, but it's the marginal cost curve that changes the profit maximizing level of output as the MR equals MC point has moved to the right. 
A lump sum subsidy does not change a firm's level of output because a lump sum subsidy does not change marginal cost. It reduces the firm's fixed costs and shifts the average total cost curve down. This will increase a firm's economic profit, but not change output. Number nine, how does production in the short run compare to the long run? In the short run, a firm can increase its output by employing more variable inputs. The firm can reduce output by hiring fewer variable inputs. It can experience economic profits or economic losses. The firm can also break even or shut down and produce zero units of output. In the short run, the capacity of the plant is fixed. In the long run, a firm can change the quantities of all economic inputs and its plant capacity. Firms can also enter and exit an industry. Number 10. What are the three components of the long-run average total cost curve? The long-run average total cost curve contains three parts. Economies of scale, constant returns to scale, and diseconomies of scale. Economies of scale will occur when long-run average total costs decrease as output increases. This happens because the firm is specializing its productive resources efficiently. Large firms that own many resources and employ advanced technology will experience economies of scale over a larger range of output than smaller firms. The point where the long-run average total cost curve reaches its minimum is known as minimum efficient scale. Constant returns to scale exists when long-run average total costs stay the same as output increases. Diseconomies of scale will occur when long-run average total costs increase as output increases. This happens as expanding firms experience inefficiencies during the production process. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.